called on the court. November uh, Moyne Area Metropolitan Planning Organization Policy Committee meeting. Ask for a motion and second to approve the agenda. Removes approval. Second. Reva, second. second. Motion by Murray, second by Gatto. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Abstentions. Motion carries. M3 is to approve the minutes from the October meeting. Move the minutes, Polk County. Motion by Hawkinsmith. Second. Second by Gatto. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Abstentions. Motion carries. Item four is the consent to vote on the approval of the financial statement, Todd. Yeah, thank you. Um, typical month for us, um, normal expenses and, and uh, income. Uh, nothing uh, real special to, to pull out, uh, recommend approval. Todd, any questions for Todd? Move, Bow County. Second, Angie. Second, Reva. By poll discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Full same sign. Extensions. Motion carries. Item five is the consent to vote on contracts and expenses. Before we get into this, um, what, can we get to the next screen just to show what, what this is? All right, before we get into any discussion on this or any motion, we had uh, to say we had extensive discussion at the executive committee on this. is a, a, quite an understatement. We had some. So very good discussion on this. As a result of this, as a result of some other things uh, that have come up, uh, we are going to have a special meeting of the policy committee on the morning of uh, December 19. So mark that on your calendars now. Uh, plan for uh, plan for four hours. Pat Bodie is going to be a facilitator for this. And the purpose of this meeting is to is to discuss uh, outside contracts uh, with, that the MPO is having. Uh, we need to, we need to, you know, again, there was some, some very extensive discussion of the executive committee. Uh, this, this is a vote on an existing outside contract that the FBO has. This is an amendment to that existing contract that was approved in March. Uh, regardless of how this vote comes out today, we're we still going to have uh, this meeting uh, in December. I would, I would, I'm not going to, I want everybody to be here in the room as well. I don't think it does any good for, for us to do this electronically or by Zoom. I want butts and seats, so I'm asking all of you to please allocate some time. We're not going to have a December regular policy committee meeting. I'm asking you to be here on the morning of December 19th so we can have some productive discussion and move this order forward. What was the time again, Bob? Eight o'clock. Is that going to be soon, sir? I'd like everybody here. I okay. Um, question, question for Todd. Oh, we're going to be out of town. Yeah. Be out of town we'll make a Zoom option. Okay. But please don't sit in Des Moines, Iowa, or in Iowa on Zoom. That's all. Yeah, I'm in Florida. I understand. I understand. If people are going to be out of town, that's fine. But I like people here. I got a quick question, Mr. Chairman. I assume that all of our, like, uh, somebody in our staff and our office will be aware that it runs our calendars. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm writing it down as you speak, but sometimes, you know, you get lost in all this stuff we're scheduling. So I just want to make sure I'm available. So I'm sure I, I, I will be there, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Tom, we'll, we'll certainly send out a, a meeting notice to, to everyone and to appropriate staff for you guys. Okay, perfect. Thank you. It's important for people to participate on this, so we'll, we'll make it available by like people that to participate. So please, we set that aside. I'm letting you know that now. So again, now we are on contracts and expenses. Uh, we're going to have a discussion on this. Todd, you want to you want to introduce this item? Sure. Thank you. Um, we have a, a contract with the Story County Housing Trust Fund to uh, manage some of the, their, their funding. We, we entered that contract uh, a while back. And it, it's simply um, similar to kind of like STBG funds. We're helping administer uh, some of their funding. We don't do any projects with it. We simply administer their funding. They are um, recently uh, received some additional ARPA funding. This is just to amend that contract and bring that additional ARPA funding into the contract mm -hmm. and uh, help manage the process for them on on uh, the federal side of those things. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Staff would recommend approval. Mm -hmm. 
I know you're too special. Sure. If you're not speaking, please mute because please. Uh, do you have a question or comment? So what's the topic of the meeting on December 19th? Just general. Yeah. Yeah. And the so scope still would what's like it? a vote on this now. Well, executive committee approved this. Uh, this is an existing contract. We're going to be talking about any new contracts. I mean, but this is like this is an amendment to an existing contract that the MPO has with Story County Housing Trust. Yeah, the, the contract that Let's go, uh, led to all the discussion was a separate contract that doesn't, this isn't what we're talking about with this amendment. Yes. Okay, I heard a motion by Randleman, is there a second? Second, Clark. Clark, thank you. Discussion. Is Story County a member of the MPO? No. No. Any further discussion? All right, call for the vote. Uh, we're gonna, assume we're gonna have some no votes, so I'm gonna go through. If we have no votes, I'd like people to identify. So let's first take a, let's do a roll call vote. All in favor, uh, Tracy, can you do the roll call, please? Anthony? Yes. Yes. Carlisle. Yes. Clyde. Yeah, because this is the existing contract, I'll vote yes. City of Des Moines, Scott Sanders. No. City of Des Moines, Connie Bozen. No. City of Des Moines, Carl Voss. No. City of Des Moines, Joe Gatto. No. City of Grimes, Jake Anderson. City of Norwalk, Stephanie Reba. Yes. Pleasant Hill, Glen McMurray. Glen no. Murray, sorry. Oak County, Tom Hawkinson. No. Waukee, Courtney Clark. Yes. Windsor Heights, Mike Jones. Yes. Uh, West Des Moines, Jamie Ledsbury. Yes. I oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I apologize. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, City of Bondurant, how do you? Uh, I'm here. Your vote, yes or no? I just joined. I'm sorry. What was that? All right, we're voting on the contracts and expenses on item five. Russ Trimble okay. just joined as well. So, on red, you have a vote. Vote. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. I didn't know you're talking uh, to me. Yeah. yeah, I'll I'll vote yes. Okay, thank you. Russ, are you on now? I am on. Are we on the Story County housing issue? Yes, yeah. we are. Yes, I vote yes too. Um, I vote yes, but I do want to say this. Uh, you know, I think there's there's been a point that's been brought up that, you know, our main mission is transportation, and I don't disagree with that. I I voiced that uh, 
I think, at the executive committee. Uh, I am in favor of this. I'm going to vote yes today. Uh, but I do think that uh, in the future, we need to uh, take a closer look at this and, uh, and re-examine it. But I am, I'm a yes today. Thank you. I have 10 to 6 yeses. Okay, so motion passes. All right, thank you. Uh, I have six public comment on MPO action. So do we have any public comment? I have not heard from anyone unless there's someone in the room today. Anyone here like to comment on MPO actions? I don't see any. So seeing none, we'll move on. Item seven is to uh, report and vote on the calendar year 23 meeting dates. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, our normal meeting dates, uh, next slide, please. Uh, normal meeting dates, we did move the uh, May uh, exec meeting uh, due to uh, the anticipated Des Moines uh, partnership DC trip. And also we, we do not schedule meetings in March, uh, July or December uh, for policy. So um, unless anyone has any questions, I'd recommend approval of those dates and then we'll get them out to everyone in their staffs to get on their calendar. Move the meeting dates, Polk County. Murray second. Second by Murray. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign. Attentions. I may as a report and vote on the federal fiscal year 2326 transportation improvement program amendments. Ashman. Thank you. We have three amendments to consider today. One of the first comes from the city of Des Moines, their Walnut Street Bridge replacement project. Um, we are just switching the funding source from SWAT STBG to regular STBG, which is federal aid, um, and adding it into this year's TIP. There was a letting date, <coughs> which is why this funding source needs to change. The second comes from DART. They have some transit shelters that already were awarded funding last, and they were included in last year's TIP. They did not spend those yet, so they need to move them up to this year's TIP. Again, this is funding they already have. And then the last one comes from the DOT, their US 65 bridge deck overlay project. Um, they had an increase in project costs, um, and so we're just changing that amount, uh, but it's already included in this year's TIP. So with that, I'll take any questions. Otherwise, I would recommend approval. Mr. Chair, the 23 and 26 uh, tip amendments, Polk County. Hold, hold, hold on, thanks, Tom. Hold on. That's fine. I, I just had a question about, do you have a location where the dark shelters, uh, the transit shelters are going to be? We should have, I believe it's 26 shelters and on where we do our tip on a, a software called TPMS, we should have all 26 locations listed. Is Elizabeth not on? Do we not have? We don't. I don't have this map with me right now. But that Elizabeth, information we Elizabeth is on. Hi, uh, this is Elizabeth. I don't have the those in front of me, but we can get them to you, Councilman Gatto. Thank you. We'll send them out. I'll second the motion. Okay, motion by Hawkinsman, second by Gatto. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Close same sign. Extensions. That carries. All right, thanks, Esther. Uh, I don't read nine is a report on the STBG program schedule, Zach. Yes, thank you. Just want to give you a quick update on the program schedule for the next round of STBG funding. Um, we're going to post the applications on the website on December 1st, and then we'll have those be due back to the MPO by January 6th of 2023. Um, then we'll uh, schedule the presentations probably sometime in mid to late February or early March. Um, we'll probably have those scheduled in the next few weeks um, so we can update you on that. And then it'll just follow the typical schedule. Um, we'll do the presentations. We'll bring the funding subcommittee together for a meeting where they'll discuss and determine uh, what they would like to award out in this funding cycle. Um, just want to make you aware of the schedule. I would note that uh, due to some changes to the TAP program, the TAP cycle at this point will not be following the same schedule. Um, we're waiting for the DOT to make some changes and get back to us. Um, if they make those changes here in the next month or so, we'll probably be able to get TAP back on the same schedule. Otherwise, we'll have to do somewhat of a different schedule for the TAP funding in this next cycle. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions that you have. All right, thank you, Zach. Any questions for Zach on this? 
Christina, we'll move on. Item 10 is a report on the project uh, solicitation for the annual DC trip. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Bringing this item back to you, as we said we would, we postponed it in October. Usually in October is when we begin the solicitation of projects to be considered for priority projects on the annual DC trip when we're out there advocating for uh, transportation priorities here locally. Um, we brought it back to exec last week, and they uh, agreed with staff that the dust hadn't settled yet far enough on uh, the elections in November to have a good direction on this yet. Uh, the dust has settled a little bit more at this point, but I think we'll just have to feel more comfortable to see things shake out a little bit farther uh, before we bring this back to the recommendation of the project solicitation process. Uh, so unless you have any guidance to offer us at this point, we would suggest that we talk this again. Okay. Any comments, questions? All right, thank you. Uh, all right, item 11 is recorded in MPO representative selection process, Bill. Thank you. As we end the calendar year here, we'll start to solicit uh, representatives for the next calendar year uh, appointments to BMPO. Uh, we do this for both the policy and the technical committees. And what we'll do is we'll send out probably next week, maybe even or, or following week, last week uh, November, send out to all the communities that are members of the MPO and ask for your appointments to the tech and policy committees. We'll also ask for nominations to the executive committee. Um, after we get all those appointments and we get everybody set, then we'll do the selection of officers, which will happen early next year. If you go to the next slide, um, when we updated the bylaws a couple of years ago, we changed how this works a little bit. So I wanted to review that process just a bit. For the communities that are under 50,000, when it comes to selecting the policy committee or policy and tech committee members, they appoint their, their own representatives like we've always done. When it comes to the executive committee members, though, um, each community gets to a point where they want to nominate or they get to nominate a representative to the executive committee. And then the mayors or the chair of the supervisors for that region, and we've got the three different sub areas up there on the screen, uh, they get together and select who their two representatives for that sub area will be on the executive committee. Mm -hmm. to reiterate the way the executive committee works is City of Moyne has two reps, Ankeny and West Des Moines have a rep, Polk County has a rep. And then each of the three sub areas have two representatives. So, they said the larger communities they get to appoint who they want, but the smaller communities uh, have to have that nomination process. So, just to be a heads up, we'll explain all this in the letters that we sent out as well. But this could be a little bit so we want to make sure everyone's aware of that process and ask for your timely response to this as we move forward. If there's any questions now or in the future as you look at this, please let us know. Otherwise, that's what we have. So will we have that list before the 19th. Or are we going to have the existing members talk about it and then have new members come aboard? To um, we won't have the new members yet. I think we typically ask by the end of the year to have those new representatives. Seems yep. a little counterproductive to have folks unless they're going to be, I mean, unless everyone's going to be on the on the executive committee and on the policy committee. Um, to make decisions like we're going to make with the with the rest of the board that's going to be put in place the following month. I don't know. That, that seems a little counterintuitive to me. But well, how do you want to change time? Uh, I mean, we, we, I mean we, we, can wait, we can wait until we get the, the new board and not have it on the 19th and try to rush through it. I, I don't know. I don't know what the big rush is. And we have to get it done next month. We can't wait until the new appointees or if there is any new appointees and the current board that's going to serve that's really going to be talking about you know the extra contracts that we're talking about i mean i i, I think that i mean I, I don't i don't understand why they wouldn't wait and, and get, get the executive committee and the full policy committee and and have them be able to talk about it instead of trying to rush this through in three weeks and you know, we're giving everybody three weeks. I mean, I, I, I don't, that's just, that's, that's a request that I would wonder from you, Mr. Chair, you know, what, what's, what's the rush? Well, the, Joe, there's the, the rush is that this is an ongoing organization. And, you know, right. Things change over time. just like, yeah, well, we've had, we've, we had a strategic plan less than five years ago that we spent 12 months on okay. that, that we, I think we were very clear that the extra contracts were supposed to be transportation based and that that's not being fulfilled by 
the current staff and the current director. And so now we're going to go back and ask it, board. I don't believe that in that strategic plan that it, it specified that they had to be explicitly transportation. I've asked you for that documentation. I haven't seen it, that it doesn't say that. Did you watch that budget presentation from the March meeting? Yeah. Did, did you actually watch the video and look at the? I, I watched. I watched enough of it, Mr. Mayor. Did you, I just want. I just want. No, it's not. It's not an argument. No, I just asked the question. Uh, can I finish this? Sure. I mean, didn't you, the, the contracts were listed on that in March, weren't they? I, I'm asking the question. Why are we doing it? When we're going to have a turnover of maybe some existing board members here. Why are we doing that? Why are we doing it on the 19th? Why don't we wait until the next week and do it in January and give everybody plenty of time to clear their schedule and make sure it happens? So that's the only question. Because we don't have a policy committee meeting They're in December. Okay. January becomes a busy time too. So we're trying to find a time to do this. January becomes a busier time than the month of December during the holidays. New Year tends to be pretty busy. Yeah, it does for me. Is there, any, is there any good time? I mean, you said you wanted it a Monday. We talked about this. I, I found a Monday for it. I, I completely understand. I just asked the question of why, why we wouldn't wait for where the current board that's going to be put in place by these other communities. If you go back another slide, we might have a completely different executive committee. We might have, a, we might have new board members that are going to be on here for the policy committee. And we're going to, we're, we're going to, we're going to have a meeting and we're going to implement things, and and then the new board members are going to. I didn't say that. Maybe they don't agree with that. I, I well, ultimately the policy committee decides. I understand the executive. I, I I understand. Okay. I I'm just wondering. We have had no city elections this year, so the, you know I, I don't see a big change in the policy. <laughs> okay. So ultimately, the policy committee decides what's the difference on if there's a slight change in the executive. Maybe maybe the same people be on the policy committee. That's my point. They don't. I mean, we don't automatically. We keep haven't all had the turnover. People. We haven't had a turnover in, in in the city governments. We've had a turnover from different people serving from different communities over the last three years. Massive turnover. But not and, and, I, and I haven't seen their faces in in seats here. They've all been on Zoom. A lot of them. I guess what I'm saying is they're. I just asked a question. I mean, all right. I mean, obviously, we're we're trying to we're, we're trying to rush through it. I don't I don't understand what's the big hurry. I mean, I, I don't, I don't see understand why to it, Joe. I, if we're trying to set up meeting. We're trying to keep things moving. You know, if you want to delay it more, we can talk. About it. I don't know what the reason for the delay is. I just asked if the if the current the new board that's going to sit here, why wouldn't they be part of the discussion? I, I don't understand what, why we which new board. We we won't have a new sitting board until. March. Okay. We won't have new officers until March. We won't have new officers. Or so officers, excuse me. If there is a change in policy committee representatives, but that's for each jurisdiction. So this, this is this is this is Russ. This is Russ. I've got a question, I guess. This is reminding me almost of the uh, you know, partisan debate on uh, you know, appointing somebody to the Supreme Court. Do they wait or do they have the president that comes in and do this? Is there that, that crossed my mind too. Right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, guys, come on, we're better than this. I mean, it's. Uh, I guess my question is: Is there precedent to wait on any given issue, to delay a given issue to the next? If if there is, then all right, let's consider that. But if there's no precedent on waiting, uh, I, I don't know what. Why not just conduct our business like we normally do? That's the only comment I have. Is there, does anybody know, do, do we have anybody that goes far enough back? Have we ever done this where we've delayed a vote on something or delayed an issue until we had a new board in place? What are we, what are we delaying? We're only delaying of having a, a, a strategic plan that we've already did less than five years ago that we're, we're, we're only delaying having another discussion about it. We're not delaying any vote. Are we delaying a vote? We're delaying any possible action on it if there were to be these contracts to move forward. Okay, and there's like a whole group of them other than Story County that we're talking about that needs to be done. You, you need that done, Dylan, right now? Just the Story County ones right now. 
just $190,000 Story County additional funding for housing. And that has to be done now. Was there a lot of people that bid on the RFP or was that just us? Just us. Yeah. So they have the contract to us. They want they want a response to get going. So we're just trying to be good, you know, partners to work. Here, here's, here's, I, I'll, I'll repeat again where I stand on this thing. I, I think the point is well taken. We are a transportation organization. We should be trying to keep our focus to transportation. That said, this is, this is a situation where we are, are helping out uh, some member communities with uh, the housing. Uh, we are not uh, dropping the ball anywhere. We are not being distracted from our, our mission of transportation. It's not that staff isn't doing their job because they can't because they're working on housing. Nothing, nothing like that. And, and matter of fact, we're actually benefiting uh, from a staffing standpoint and from a financial standpoint uh, slightly uh, from doing this. And so to that, to that end, to that end, to the fact that we're continuing to get our job done and and focusing on transportation, not dropping any balls and benefiting a little bit from this. Uh, and, and, and this needs to be done and it helps some member communities. I'm, I'm fine with doing this. I'm fine with doing the other contract, but I think what needs to be, I, I think we do need to take a look at it. I think we need to send a message to Story County uh, Housing Trust Fund. We're doing this now, but when this contract expires, you know, you've got from now till when this contract expires to find somebody else to, to do this because we are going to revert back to our main mission of transportation. I don't see a big problem doing this now. I really don't. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm sorry, it's Supervisor Hawksmith. I have to comment. You know, I've served on this committee for 20 years. Um, I was off for a few years and I'm back now. But your comment about we're not dropping the ball on anything, um, frankly, um, the Southeast Connector dead ends at 30th Street and it has for quite some time. Uh, the, the Eastern Reconstruction Project, the Army, Army Post Reconstruction Project, all those things are not getting done. We're not getting the money. We're not doing those things. When I came on this committee uh, back in 2003, uh, Tom Kane was the director. There was four or five staff people, and we were a rock-solid transportation organization. We were doing I-235 rebuild. We were building interchanges. We were finishing up the Highway um, 5 bypass. Uh, we, do, we were doing all those things at that time. Now, uh, we're doing, now we've got 14, 15 staff. And so and for you to say uh, that, uh, what? We're getting off topic here. Well, Bob, I'm, I'm, I'm commenting on, on the mayor's comments, Bob. So, wrap it up, please. Uh, we're going to And we can't say anything? Is that what you're telling me? I'm asking you to wrap up your comments and we're moving on. You heard the message. Well, one, one additional comment to uh, Mayor Trimble's. Story County is not a member. I mean, you, you answered that question. Story County is not a member of this organization. Right. You know, we're, we're, talk we're talking about dates and the, the representative selection process. We've gotten way off topic. We're not gonna discuss this today. I'm moving on. Item 12 was a report in the fiscal year 23, first quarter budget report. Run. So first quarter, um, pretty close to the quarter of everything. We have a couple of things that are a little bit higher. Um, the audit professional services, those are a little bit higher because we pre-think and already had that done. And then the other is memberships, which those all kind of do quite early in the year. So otherwise we're pretty much on target. Anyone have questions? Thank you, Rhonda. Questions for Rhonda. All right, thank you. Item 13 is a report on the Purple Heart Highway, Gunner. Oh my God. Keep this real brief. I shared this with the exec last week, share it with you now. We've updated our timeline here to reflect the pausing of the technical analysis to allow for the political process to play out a little bit farther. Uh, so we continue to meet with local stakeholders, in particular with a focus in the ag community. Uh, we've had several sex successful meetings with ag stakeholders, uh, notably Billy Hunt uh, with Cultivation Corridor, Bill Norley with Ag Business Association, Mike Steenbook with the Soy Transportation Coalition. Happy to say that we're really close to scheduling a meeting with a larger, not too large, a small group, but a larger group, not just one one-on-ones, a uh, group of stakeholders who will be important to this overall process. 
Also, we'll note that some of the upcoming meetings that we hope to hold here somewhat soon will be with Debbie Durham and IEPA. Iowa DOT is going to schedule that. And then also corridor communities. We're going to be a little bit farther along in the conversation with the ag communities or the ag stakeholders before we schedule those, but you can expect to see those being scheduled here sometime soon. I haven't taken any questions. Who, who's the representative from Des Moines that are meeting with these stakeholders? Uh, who's the policy committee members? Uh, Stephanie Rita has been participating in all these uh, meetings as the vice chair and our executive committee. Okay, just Stephanie? So far, yeah. Bear in mind that these have been very small uh, yeah. groups just to ask for early guidance on process. We might want to include everybody in the corridor, whether that be Pleasant Hill, West Des Moines, Des Moines, Altoona. None of the corridors have been scheduled, the best reason. Yeah, no, I, I'm just saying, I mean, everyone has a stake in it. So, I mean, we, okay. we will make sure to have everyone who is quite engaged. So, will we get information about those meetings when they occur, Gunnar, so that we could at least sit in and listen? I mean, I, I would like to know on Pleasant Hill's behalf what the pushback may be from some of these stakeholders and stuff, just so we have a better understanding of where we're going. It really is about that information yes. and understanding. We do want to have this to be a two-way conversation. That's why we're giving updates every every month here. I'm talking about within those small groups. That yes, we want to go into depth on all the conversations. Yes. Any conversations right. with Farm Bureau? Uh, there have been scheduled, there have been conversations in the not too distant past, and those will be scheduled in the future. I don't know if the Farm Bureau will be part of the egg stakeholder group that I just mentioned, but they are on the short list of near term stakeholders to be scheduled. I guess I'm still confused. Mm -hmm. Are those public meetings or not? And will we get to participate? I'm not talking about having an exchange of them, just an understanding. So the meetings that I've been referencing here have been a one-on-one -on -one between staff and stakeholders. This is the MPO representing the will of the policy group and trying to advance this initiative. Uh, does not meet the definition of a public meeting per se. They're not posted meetings or anything of that nature. Uh, but we have done our level best to be inclusive of the committee, and it, uh, it's why we're here giving the updates. And it's why we've had our vice chair for these meetings. I just briefed the chair uh, on an upcoming meeting to make sure that there's adequate representation there. So yes, we've been glad we, we can let everybody know about whatever the meeting is, but we trying to as Gunnar said, advance the cause of this. Uh the has been a little bit of food for years. Yeah, I, that's why I, I understand. Just, I, I, I'm not trying to argue about I, I right. would just like to know what those meetings. We'll get the information. I appreciate it. Information out there, we'll get it out. I just wonder, I mean I participated in conversations for two years as a chair, and I you know, just we, we haven't had any ongoing conversation. I haven't I haven't heard much about it since I stopped being the chair. I know Stephanie will do a great job representing. Well, and and Stephanie just, and I have also as well. Joe, we've been and that's what Gunnar is has been reporting exactly what we've been doing. So we've had we've had the updates at the exec, we've had the updates here. So I mean if people want to participate one of them, you know, if directly on it, we can get the information out. Um, we, we try to keep it that's you know, somewhat streamlined to keep the process going. Absolutely. Forward. Understand completely. Mm -hmm. So, anything further on that, guys? Any questions? Any questions for Governor? All right, thanks, Governor. Uh, item 14 is a report on the water bill. Thank you. Uh, next slide. Um, I think uh, uh, many of you are aware we um, had our bid letting earlier this month on November 1st. We received a a bid from United Riley uh, Partnership uh, to do the, the Scott Avenue in water phase. That bid was um, just under 41 million. Um, we have uh, met, had the special policy meeting. Thanks all who are in attendance for that at, at, on November 8th to award the contract. Since that time, we've been busy working with the DOT and uh, the contractor team on getting the documents put together and, and uh, signed. They have submitted all their insurance and bonding uh, documents and signed the contract. Um, when the slide was put together, the DOT hadn't finalized their, their piece of it, but it has been signed and we have a fully executed contract now. And so we will be preparing the first um, a pay item, which was for uh, uh, Ten percent of the mobilization uh, that will be done here in the coming couple of days to uh, get this project off of the um, 
federal uh, list of um, projects that are not moving forward. Um, um, I forget the exact term they use, but uh, Federal Highway has been aware of what we've been doing, so they, they weren't too concerned, but we'll, we'll take care of that and, and be ready to, to hit construction when the weather breaks. I'm happy to answer any questions. Mr. Chair, go ahead. Just, just a question. Um, lots of decisions have been made. That's behind us now. We must succeed now in my mind. Uh, so the question is, we'll continue to receive the updates on the water trails, I'm assuming. Yes. And this body will be approving that any reviewing and approving any change orders, uh, payment pieces uh, as this project moves forward, I'm assuming. I don't know. We've never really talked about the process of these. Tom, Todd, you want to? Yeah, yeah. We will be certainly bringing forward um, if there are any change orders that require um, significant deviation from the project. We also be doing monthly updates uh, like we have been on the project. Um, we can also bring forward, uh, and we've, I think, expressed this probably several months ago when we were initially uh, bidding this project, but we would bring forward uh, the pay requests. Uh, each month as well, and then uh, and the reimbursement process part of that as well. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything further? Yeah. All right, thanks, Todd. Uh, item 15, legislative update to the Central Room one. Yeah, there's really nothing more beyond what Gunnar had said earlier with the election. We just don't quite know enough yet. Um, a lot of stuff was on board too to the election, so here in the coming weeks, hopefully, we'll get some more resolution on those. Okay, I have 16 uh, report on upcoming events, Alex. Just two that are coming up just after the holidays when we all get back. So one, um, our partner on a lot of the EV work that's going on Metro, the Electrification Coalition is having a policy, EV policy in 2023 webinar, uh, Wednesday, November 30th. It's uh, gonna be a GFTAC day, Utah. So we're gonna, that afternoon, also there's the USDOT coordinating council on access and mobility. So it really relates to our PTP and that passenger transportation plan that we're working on right now. But this is a national strategic plan to integrate uh, persons with disability or disadvantaged populations into the transportation planning process. So that is that afternoon. So if you want to spend a day online and indoors, there's some opportunities. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them at this time. All right, uh, moving on then to other on non action items. I think Zach and Todd each have one. Zach, I'll recommend you first. Thank you. I uh, want to give a quick update on the Safe Streets and Roads for All grant um, that we applied for back in September. Just as a uh, reminder, this was a grant that would give us access to safety funds uh, for the transportation system here in the Des Moines metro area. Um, the USDOT had reached out to us maybe about 10 or 12 days ago to let us know that they had flagged basically all the MPOs, RPAs, in Iowa, along with the uh, statewide uh, 97 county application from the County Service Bureau as potentially being duplicate applications due to crossovers in geography. So we had a meeting with them um, last week, I believe, just kind of discuss this and work through it, um, basically the, with the idea to assure them that we weren't going to be duplicating uh, geographies with these different applications that have been submitted. Um, they have requested, the DOT that is, has requested that we submit some additional information to them by Friday. Um, we submitted information to them um, this morning. Um, I know that the other applicants in the county application are all submitting information as well. Um, based on what they've told us, we don't see that there's going to be any issue once we get that information to them uh, with moving our applications forward. Um, we're just waiting to hear back from them at this point. Um, I did have an additional conversation um, with USDOT and they had suggested that we consider doing a joint plan agreement if we were awarded funding, uh, doing a joint plan agreement between the MPO and SERPA. Um, this is basically because, you know, the same staff is doing the back end administration of the grant and they just felt like it would improve the efficiency of the grant management if um, we did a joint agreement. Um, this would not mean that it would be a joint plan. Um, both organizations would still go through a separate RFP process to select a consultant and the planning process moving forward would be separate for each of those organizations. It would just be for the back end 
um, grant management side of things. Um, that's the update I have for you. Um, I'd be interested to know if there's any concern about doing um, a joint agreement if we were uh, both awarded funding. Uh, otherwise, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Questions or comments? Thank you, Zach. Uh, Todd? Um, one other one is, uh, I got two actually, but the one is, uh, first one is on the Hickman Road interchange. The DOT is doing a public input session on that. Uh, the date is uh, next Tuesday, um, 5 to 6.30 over at the Walnut Hills Methodist Church. Uh, there's also a virtual uh, meeting and presentation uh, that's available on the DOT's website. We'll send this link out in, in the meeting materials after. Uh, that's available from the 22nd to December 5th. It'll go over the same information and allow you to comment uh, at that time as well. Um, last thing I had was I, I just wanted to let, um, let Dylan go ahead and do that one. I can, we just have two grant opportunities. This is probably more for your staff, but... Uh, there's a smart grant opportunity. This is due uh, tomorrow, actually. And I think there might be a few uh, applications from the metro area, but once we find out more, we'll, we'll let everybody know what's going on there. Um, the next one is a thriving communities program. This is more for technical assistance. Uh, this has a couple more weeks left. December 6th is the deadline for letters of intent. If anybody has questions or is interested in these, please just let us know and we'll help you walk through that. Now it's a ton of more. Yeah. Yeah, one last one. Um, just wanted to, to let everyone know uh, Aspen is uh, stepping away from the MPO. She's headed to Texas. So I just wanted to thank her for all her work um, over the past year or so and, and thank her for those efforts and wish her well on, on her new journey. All right. Uh, anything else for the go of the order? Mr. Chairman, may I make a comment? Okay. Uh, I don't want us to lose sight that we have a great group of planners within the MPO that do a lot of good work for us. You know, they do a great job on transportation planning, keeping us educated on opportunities, funding kinds of things, current model ordinances. I don't want us to lose sight of the good work these folks do. because I, I know things are a little contentious right now. Really? Uh, so I, I want to let them know that I really appreciate what they've been doing for us. So not to lose sight of the good work that's being done. Thanks for that comment. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, without any further, our next meeting date is on January 19, 2023. Thank you.